Hey, welcome to UK Wildcrafts. So I get a lot of people asking me about this plant here, common hogweed, and they say it's a plant they'd really like to try, but they're not quite confident enough in identifying it yet, uh, which is fair enough because it's part of the Umbellifa family, which contains some really deadly species like poison hemlock and hemlock water droplet. So I thought I'd do a, a bit more of an in-depth video on how to identify this plant, common hogweed, Heraclium spondylium. So let's start with the leaves. So each leaf stem has up to three pairs of opposing leaves. Sometimes just one or two, but most often three. The lowest pair has long stalks. The other, the other top two have shorter stalks, if any at all. At the top of the leaf, there's the, the terminal leaf which has three lobes. If you hold one of the leaves up to the light, then you can see a network of very thin translucent veins. The leaves are a pale green. They can go darker green as they get older. And most importantly, they have a downy fur on them. which gives it look like a sheen that's on both sides. And the leaves have serrated lobes. So this is a lobe here, and then in those lobes there are serrations. So next let's look at the petiole which is the leaf stem. So not the main central stem, just the stem with the leaves on it. These also have the downy fur that the leaves have as well. And they are rounded and they have a groove, like a channel, running down the top of the petiole. They can grow up to around 30 centimetres and if you cut one you'll see the cross section, you see the ridge at the top there and also it has irregular holes. If you follow the petiole down to where it meets the main stem you'll see an overlapping sheath base. The common hogweed can grow to around two meters. The main central stem is green, but it can be, it can have a purple coloring, especially around the nodes. but it doesn't have purple or red flecking on the stem. That is a sign of giant hogweed. It does have ridges running up the stem. And again, that downy fur. And it's retrosely hairy, which means the hairs are running slightly or curved down the stem. And they are hollow and you'll often find the stems, the dead stems standing all year. The flowers form in umbels, which means umbrella-like clusters and they're small white flowers. Sometimes they can have a little bit of a purplish tinge to them. On each of the umbels, there are around 15 separate stems. Sometimes you get up to about 20, whereas giant hogweed, you'll have over 20, 25 or more. And with giant hogweed, 
the the umbels of flowers are much much bigger than this so in the summer when you find the protective sheaths like this they have the unopened flowers in and they're just like they look just like broccoli and these are really nice edible in fact, the best edible parts of the plant are the, the unopened flowers like this, the very young shoots, like the leaves, before they've opened properly, and then later on the immature seeds, when they're still green, are a bit like cardamom. Yeah, here are some of the seeds of the common hogweed, just at about the right stage. So what I like to do is I take these home and dry them, grind them up, use them in curries or anything that you'd use cardamom in. Uh, if you're unsure though whether you've got common hogweed or giant hogweed, don't touch the plant because it has phototoxic sap which can cause really bad burning and blistering on your skin. Yeah, so giant hogweed, Heraclium mantegazzianum, the leaves aren't, they don't have the downy fur on, and also they are doubly serrated. So the serrations end in a sharp point. Uh, the plants are a lot bigger as well. They can grow upwards of four metres, and the the hairs on the stem, instead of having the downy fur, they have a stiff, bristly hair that looks more like spines, especially at the nodes. And they have red flecking on the stem, which literally looks like someone's put paint and flicked it on the stem. And they're much more likely to be found growing in waterways, so alongside rivers. Not always, but that's their favoured habitat. <laughs> 